Hello everyone, my name is Austin Belzer from Austin B Media, and I have today the creative team behind the documentary, Still Working 9 to 5. It's a uh, documentary pre uh, having its world premiere at South by Southwest 2022, which I'll be covering uh, with a review of this film, as well as this interview you see right here. Um, we've got uh, Gary Lane, and I apologize if I butcher a lot of names, because as I said in the pre-interview, it's been a lot of films over the past 24 hours, and then I've yes. got Camille here, um, and I believe you both are uh, directors and producers on the film. Yes, yes. that's correct, and, Austin. Thank and you I'm Larry so much Lane, and I'm the executive. I'm Larry Lane, and I'm the executive producer. Okay. Yes. That's what that I was missing. What happened without Larry? Yes. Yes. Um, and I should mention, Camille, you're also a um, producer on the film, I, I believe. And director. Much. And director. Yeah. We're co producers and directors, me and Camille. Okay. Uh, because yeah, names in the past twenty four hours, it's it's been it's been a nonstop barrage of emails in the past week or so. I'm like, y'all want to talk about South by Southwest? Don't we have another month? Uh yeah. but, but uh but no, I uh I just uh if you're seeing this time to South by Southwest, I just did a interview with uh the directors of Long Line of Ladies. It's a docu short that you all should definitely check out. But welcome, everybody. Um, I just want to thank y'all for coming on today because it's um, it's it's a long road to South by Southwest. Um, and I I think something I'm hearing is there's a lot of diversity in the film in in, in the South by Southwest lineup. I mean. Even at Sundance, I don't think you'd see this many films in this many um, subjects. Um, mm -hmm. But um, but still working nine to five. That's so. For those who don't know, um, not nine to five was a movie with Dolly Parton, Lily Tomlin, and um, oh goodness, um, Jane Fonda. Why do I always forget her name? Ugh. She's going to see this, Austin. Yeah, she's going <laughs> to see it and be like, dude, why didn't you remember my name? It's like, I, I'm in 90% of the movie or something. Uh, well, even, even more than that, Austin, I'm going to say, Jane Fonda and her partner, Bruce Gilbert, actually came up with the idea for the film. And it was their production company that created this film. So if it wasn't for Jane Fonda, this fil the, the film 9 to 5 wouldn't have happened at all. Right. And um, it, it, and the film, the documentary even opens with the Jane uh, Jane Fonda interview. So how could I not have remembered that? Um, but it's award season and festival season, so little grace. Um, but um, this consists of all the three ladies uh, who you'll see back uh, back here. But uh, for audio listeners, that's um, a poster of uh, Dolly Parton. Um, Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin, uh, but yeah. Um, so, um, when when you were, uh, anyone can answer, but when creating this documentary, it's it's a unique blend of things because I kind of see it as two different documentaries in one. I mean, one can't exist without out the other, but you could also make two documentaries out of this. You could make a documentary just about Hey, what was making nine to five really like? Um, what what was the production behind it? Um, but you also go into so, um, the the uh, a lot of issues that the film went into. Um, and what when making this documentary? What were your takeaways when making it? Well, I will say that how the film started, um, and it does play perfectly well into what you said. Uh, there's two different ideas that came up with it. The beginning was nine to five in 2018. There was a lot of talk about the sequel finally happening and Dolly, Lily and Jane had attached to it. So that was the initial idea was, you know, I told him what has been a movie, a hit song, a TV show, a musical. Now it's going to be a sequel 40 years later. So that was the initial idea was to follow the fandom of nine to five and everything that had turned into. And then through our friendship with Camille and Camille being a documentary filmmaker as well, talking to her, she did find out that information researching that 
Jane was friends with Karen Nussbaum, who ran the nine to five organization. And there was a whole movement behind the movie for working women. So we kind of say when the fandom and the feminism came together, we made this film that we wanted to be entertaining to the fans. We wanted to be a wide range of audience to also have those issues and teach the audience a lesson as they went along of change that is still needed 40 years later. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, um, it, it, it's interesting because when that revelation happens of there was an actual organization um, called nine to five, I was like, oh, interesting. Um, there's a lot more to it than I just thought, you know, and uh, I haven't seen the movie. Sorry uh, to everyone, um, but I'll, I'll I'll rent it before South by Southwest. Um, but it, it I didn't realize that there were so many issues involved because I mean, and you go into this in the documentary. A lot of people just assumed it was this comedy. Oh, hey, Dolly's in it, so it's a comedy. And then got that thing, got everything flipped on its head almost. Um, because, and to kind of bring this up with the Jane Fonda opening interview, um, it everyone just like, well, you're not going to get too political, are you? You know, that kind of air about it. That, well, I, you know, maybe um we're riding that line you know um but i i in that sense i think i i think a lot of people can look at the schedule for south by southwest and and look at this film and maybe try and put it in that same box where people see uh, oh hey nine to five you know that dolly parton movie from 40 plus years ago, which seems insane to say because it looks like it could be shot yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. And I think there might be some worry about maybe stereotyping it as the Dolly doc at, at some points because I think people see Dolly and they're like, oh, okay, this is, well, I'm going to put it into this one box. And I think that already kind of happens with documentaries. So what what do you, what did you want to do to um, avoid that kind of stereotype? Because I think that could be something that might happen. Well, I, I'm going to say in in regards to South by Southwest, I actually don't think we mind that stereotype because if it you know it gets an audience in there that we can then educate about all the issues. And for them to still have fun and enjoy it because of all the humor and get to know Dolly a little bit more and get to know Jane and Lily and also all the issues that we're tackling. I think that's exactly the audience that we want to hit because we never wanted to preach to the converted. We want to reach people who wouldn't have thought of these issues. So I actually think it's a great thing. And I'll say the other thing we've done that's really unique for the South by Southwest audiences, we've got the new version of 9 to 5 with Dolly Parton and Kelly Clarkson. And it's a much slower, much more haunting version because, you know, 40 years later, it's not it's not funny. You know, there's still a lot of serious stuff going on. So I think the audience will be able to relate to that. And we were, you know, so happy to get, you know, Shane McAnally is one of our executive producers and him and Steve Summers came up with the idea to tweak it a little bit. And that's what we came up with. And I think fans are going to love that new version, which was made for our documentary. So we got that exclusive. And so that's, pretty, that's pretty, amazing. pretty amazing to have that. Yeah. And if it wasn't Gary and, he, and Gary and Larry, he separately knew uh, Steve Summers and separately knew Shane McAnally and was the conduit to get that whole song produced, which was amazing. So I thank my partner for that. Thank you, Camille. We also have a new original song that Shane has written in this. It's called Dreams Have Wings. And that's a, a really key point in the film as well. So we've had a lot of blessings and we're happy to be where we are right now. And the audiences are about to see it for the first time. Yeah, and, you know, touching on that, I think, I don't, I, I think there's no better festival to for this to premiere other than maybe Austin Film Fest um, because I think at its heart this is kind of a Texas film in its sense um, because I mean and y'all talk about it in the, a lot in the documentary and, and I think 
I th I think this will have a pretty great theater response because I think it'll play uh, really well. So, and how how did you guys feel about you know being confirmed for an Austin festival for a film like this? Camille, you want to go? You want me to go? No, you can go. Okay. Well, we um, we actually had been making it for four years. So we didn't really know where we were going to land because of pandemic and we were able to continue editing and the pandemic actually allowed us to really pour time into the film and make it the best that we could. So we, we were looking at, you know, Sundance, which everybody looks at Sundance, but it, it worked out that we didn't quite make it in there. And that was, it went to an online and then Berlin went to online. So we've kind of landed everything about this film has happened exactly the way it's supposed to, because now we're at South by Southwest for a world premiere. We've got, you know, three in-person screenings and the online, and it's going to be the first large festival in over two years that a full audience will be attending. So we feel like it's, it's happened just the way it should. Just like when we first interviewed Dolly, it led to Lily and Jane and Dabney. And, you know, we've all been on this ride for four years that we've been making this film. And we really feel like it's going to be well received because we did balance that line of being very entertaining and fun and giving the fandom of the exclusive photos and the behind the scenes footage they haven't seen. But we also have a really hard hitting message to say, equal pay, equal job advancement, sexual harassment, universal daycare, all of these issues that were dealt with in the film in 1980 are still being dealt with for working women today. So that's a big issue and it needs to be addressed. Yeah, and then in addition to that, I think why South by Southwest is a great festival for us too, because it's, it's film and it's music. And our documentary has both of those things that we can really showcase. We can showcase our issues, our message in our film, and also show wonderful music exclusive to South by Southwest. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, I, I keep forgetting that it's not just a film festival. I mean, you'd think there's, what, hundreds of films showing, and they're still like, no, 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 that's not enough. We, hundreds of films isn't enough. Here's music, here's panels, here's conferences. Um, and um, talking about, um, G Gary, I think you mentioned the message of um, the film. And, you know, I, I think that that actually is a perfect segue to my one of my questions, and which is... Um, I think feminism has been shifting uh, even over the 40 years, even over the last 10 years. Um, I mean, you talk about it a little bit in the film. I'll try and not spoil too much um, um, for be, so that people can watch it. Um, but what would you, um, and anyone can answer, it doesn't have to be Gary. Um, what do you hope for the next 40 years of feminism or even just, the next generation of feminism? Um, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll answer that. Um, I think, you know, equality of pay. Two, two people doing the same job, job should be paid equally. And that is still not occurring. Um, I think also, you know, men not using power, their power in the workplace to sexually harass women. Um, there's a lot of people out there, they're single mothers, they don't have, they're on minimum wage. They don't have any backups. They've got three kids at financial backups. They don't have, they've got three kids at home. So their bosses know that they can maybe play around with those women a little bit because they have no options. That needs to go completely out the window. Um, the ERA, that would be in, in the US, that would be fantastic if that's pa passed and then women would be in the constitution equally with men. Um, job advancements, that's also something, you know, women are getting more, uh, you know, uh, promotions, but still not enough. Um, and then also maternity leave or a family leave, actually, because it should be equal between, you know, men and women that, you know, both receive some sort of um, leave when they have a child. So that child can be looked after, you know, for one or two months, they both can have an attachment and then go back to work and know that they haven't lost their job. Um, so those things and, and universal childcare is something else that's, that's really important. But um, the one thing I would love that 
I wouldn't, uh, walking down the street, I wouldn't have to keep looking back to see if I'm okay. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, um, I, it's crazy that 40 years have gone by and we're still talking about this. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we were just talking pre-interview about West Side Story. There are some things that happen in there. Uh, I won't spoil the movie for people who haven't seen it um, because I think it comes to Disney Plus. I think by the time of the interview is out, so um but that is a film from even longer ago that's that the original film was 1961 i looked up today which i didn't realize i thought it was much earlier i i feel, felt like it was like 1955 or something i don't know um and the new film is very much just like hey here are the same things and we're still even though it's set in i think 1957 um it's still happening today. And um, also would have worked better if you could have said it today. But, um, um, and in that sense, you know, you have Rita Moreno, um, who I promised we'd talk about. Um, and she's been a lot in the spotlight lately. Um, Rita Moreno, just a girl who decided to go for it. I saw that at Sundance 2021. Um, mm -hmm. Apparently you told me it's, pre-interview it's now on netflix um i think you said maybe a re-edit or something like that no it's not a re-edit it's just that the, the the preview they grabbed to pull you in on that you know you see a little preview of each film as you pass it on netflix it's just all about the marlon brando affair and she has was such a bigger part of that film that that's what they used to capture people so i hope people will go see that the whole film and not just you know if they don't like that little preview they snatched out yeah, and and I'll, I was going to say, and I'll add a little bit of trivia that uh, one of the editors that worked on Rita's um, biopic uh, documentary also worked uh, tirelessly on our film as well, Lisa Benora. So, you know, we've had some fantastic editors alongside um, her, Arit Rees. Yeah, and um, so she had this, um, well... She had Rita Mar uh, Reno, just a girl, decided to go for at Sundance, West Side Story, and now um, she is in Still Working 9 to 5, the documentary. Um, and, um, and because she is, I believe, she was in the TV show, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody. Um, um, and um, it, it's just an interesting thing to kind of see um the generations of nine to five um because you have you know the original three you have dolly jane and lily uh, and then you have um alice and janney i think she was in the 2009 um yeah um broadway musical and then you talk about the west end a little bit um and it it's interesting so what what do you think about the generational impact of the film. Well, one thing we really wanted to do too, like our niece, you know, she's 20, she just turned 23 years old, absolutely loves Kelly Clarkson. I don't know, I'm sure she's heard the version of just Dolly Parton of nine to five, but this new version is gonna pull a whole new generation demographic, just the song itself. So we really wanted to attach something. And I think the song and the documentary are completely married. And I think they're going to bring a lot of people into this message. So that's what we really wanted to do. We wanted people to have fun and enjoy the fandom, but we really wanted to let them know about the ERA. And even two weeks ago, Joe Biden just tweeted, you know, I want to get, you know, the ERA passed. I think women should be equal. This is going to be happening in real time when South by Southwest audiences are watching it in the theater in March. And, and another thing I'll add to that, as you said earlier, you still have not seen the original film. And a lot of people that have reviewed this film for us have also said, I'd never seen the original. So I went back and watched the original. So we wanted them to see what nine to five was back then, how ahead of the time it was. So that's why we're really paying tribute to nine to five and the fact that all those issues are still here today. And across the generations, you just haven't had a film 
that was also, like I said at the beginning, a hit song, a TV show, a musical, a revised musical after Me Too. You know, London went a whole different route with the musical because in Broadway in 2009, Me Too hadn't happened. So the audiences didn't latch onto the message as strong as they did in 2009 for the West End London 2019. version. 2019 for the West End London version. Yeah, and as and as one of uh, uh, our interviewees says, Ellen Cassidy in the film, you know, Me Too is a new slogan, but it's definitely not a new issue. We've had these issues over the generations, things are incrementally changing, but not changing enough. So all the women have to stick together to try and create more change. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I... And speaking of women, I think we've, um, you know, we're getting a lot more uh, women documentarians out there. I, I mean, I wrote down after I saw the um, documentary, if I can flip to the right page, um, you know, I think uh, the Rita Marino doc was directed by a woman. Uh, we had Cusp last year. Um, uh, we had RBG uh, all in the fight for democracy and a bunch of other stuff that I definitely don't have time to list i mean i could probably go on a tirade about the whole list of um yeah great I, documentaries I'll, I, yeah i'll talk to that i mean i i think you know documentaries always probably been more of a space for women because it's not a part of traditional media traditional media is usually been run by men so a lot of directors have always been male so a lot of the the space that where where women could actually enter were documentaries um, and also now a lot more women actually being successful they're also supporting those female filmmakers by investing in documentaries and we have besides the wonderful you know larry lane we have you know only one other investor in this film by the name of regina scully so we got really amazing support by another female filmmaker who invested in this film so you know i i think that and also um a, a lot more women want to hear women's stories and i think now you know men are also open to hearing women's stories and i've actually been very proud to do this film with two men who also want to you know see equality in the workplace but also you know in society yeah for sure and you know I, while you were saying that i actually thought of two uh do women documentarians i actually really love I, either separately on their own um i believe Betsy Cohen and Julie West are some of my favorites. Um, yeah. Like the Julia documentary, if you if you ever get a chance, watch that because it's fascinating. Um, I, I forget where I watched it. Um, it was at some festival. Um, I can't remember which. I think it was probably AFI Docs, if I had yeah. to guess. Um, and a few other, like, and they're absolute machines, by the way. I don't know how they sleep. Um, but I mean, for real, I, they had like, I think two or three documentaries out in the past year. It's oh, insane. Fantastic. Well, because um, they had during the pandemic, they actually had time to uh, edit everything and not film. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it, it's like that sometimes. But um, I, you know, I, I really do hope that people see this film. Um, this documentary, or rather, I keep trying to call doc documentaries film. I think the term is interchangeable, um, kind of like how animated films are in their own box. I feel like documentaries kind of get put in a box too. Um, and you know, um, th there's actually a, a lot of great documentaries out for Oscars this year, um, like Flea. Um, mm -hmm. And but I, I think if anyone has the chance to you know, maybe check out a few documentaries at South by Southwest. I know it's expensive, but definitely make put this one on your list, even if you haven't seen the original. Um, I, I'll um, have a review up um, when it debuts, so that should be helpful um, for those of you on the fence. But um, uh, Camille, Gary, the Lanes, uh, I, I just want to thank you so much for coming on. 
it, it's been a true pleasure, and it was a pleasure to watch the film. Uh, I'm really trying to get out and um, watch as many um, films, documentaries, shorts, what have you. Basically, anyone who emails me, uh, you, you'll get a response. Um, unless I just don't like the premise at all. Um, but, I mean, like, I've probably sent off 60 emails this week um, mm. as of recording. Um, so, and I'm probably going to see at least a quarter of those at the very least. Um, and that list is expound, expanding rapidly. Um, I think <coughs> af after this, um, I, I think I have an interview with the people behind Self Portrait uh, next. Oh, fantastic. Um, so yeah, um, I won't keep you too long, but thank you all well, for coming on. If they'll, if they'll follow our journey, because we've already gotten into a couple of more big film festivals already, so they can follow our journey at stillworking9to5.com. It will be listing everything there. And, yeah. and we love the fact that you've become an advocate. So we're really pleased, Austin. So thank you so much for your really thank kind you, work. Austin. Yeah, no problem. Anything y'all need. Jane Fonda comes after you, we'll protect you. <laughs> Forgetting her name. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll, I'll and, and I'll make sure to hide just in case. Uh, okay. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. Thanks. Bye, Austin. Bye, Austin. Bye, 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 bye. Bye.